Hi friends, today let's learn about the DC Earth Fall Locator equipment, how does it work and what exactly it gives you and how it is beneficial for you to identify the DC Earth Falls in a substation. So this product has all these accessories, you can see here a transmitter unit, a receiver unit and a cable which connects to the main DC DB system through the transmitter goes to the main uh, positive, negative and the ground. And then you have a power cable here which is used for the, to the transmitter to uh, give power when you are using it uh, below 110 volt DC system. This system gets energized automatically when you connect to 110 volt and above DC system. But if you are using it for a below voltage, a lower voltage than 110 volt, then you need to give an additional AC power supply to this transmitter. This is the receiver clamp, which is a standard clamp, which can be used for all feeders or uh, yeah, feeders and cables in the panels and in the field. If you have a bigger cable or a um, bigger diameter cable, you can use this clamp, which can which will be helpful to you identify the faulty or healthiness of the feeder. This is a cable which connects to the uh, receiver and to the standard clamp. So this is a complete accessory set which will come along with this uh, equipment we call, call it as a scope of supply then we'll understand about the transmitter now so you have this transmitter these are select uh, range selective switches and the power on switch and you have a color coded sockets which like you have positive negative and to the ground and you have an AC power supply socket you also have a, from the safety point of view we have fuses positive and negative feeder and also fuse for the main power supply and then if you go to the receiver unit you have uh, you can change to a different waveform and see what's happening in the system this is the power on uh, uh, power on button and then this is always a refresh button we call it as you can increase again and decrease again through this sense uh, this, through this button this receiver unit has uh, two channels one is a standard channel which can be used with a standard clamp okay along with this and then you have another channel channel you can use it with a bigger clamp so let's have a small demonstration how it works uh, with the DC power supply so we have created a DC system a model we can we call it as a simulator where you can see here the power you have a positive bus a negative bus and a ground and we have a balancing circuit which divides the voltage equally half we have this is a 20 volt uh, DC system and we have created a different faults whether positive or negative faults and of different resistances so you can exactly see how this equipment will give you the complete information of DC system including the fault resistance to ground the balancing resistance uh, of your DC system and also the capacitance to ground uh, for on the DC system so now let's start let's do the connection uh, red goes to the positive, green goes to the ground, black goes to the negative. Considering this as a 20 volt DC system, okay, we connect green first, always to the ground, then red to the positive, and then black to the negative. So you can see that we have some feeders already here, and uh, positive feeders in red and negative feeders in black. And we have created a resistance of 47 kilo ohm fault okay that in a positive so this is in positive fault and we can see how this shows fault in positive and negative now we connect this clamp to the receiver unit so the receiver is ready let's switch on the transmitter transmitter is on and it is asking me the output power how much it should be so let's go with the maximum press ok then it's asked us to select yes or no select the switch yes then just wait and it will tell you what exactly your system details are you can see from the receiver that it is showing that there is a positive bus bar grounded okay 
and it is measuring the voltage you can see as i mentioned you the dc db box is of 20 volts so it shows that 22 voltage negative and positive is grounded since we have created a positive fault so it has a very low positive fault of like there is a positive to ground is zero negative to ground is 22 volt and you can see the resistance to ground is 45k and the balancing resistance is more than one mega ohm the capacitance to ground is 4.7 microfarad let's see how uh, our receiver can help you to identify which feeder is faulty and which feeder is healthy so now we are starting our demonstration on a healthy feeders first and the, we have to identify all the feeders healthiness so out of these feeders any one feeder might be faulty based on the uh, for, uh, fault to ground condition so we switch on this receiver clamp then just press for two seconds your receiver will be on now you need to connect this receiver to ground cable and see whether it is really ground grounded or not so now just start the transmitting the injection of the transmitter starts from the receiver so you ask the receiver to you ask the transmitter to inject the signal you can see that there is an indication on the receiver stating that the single has, signal has already been injected you can see the leakage current as well the leakage current what we inject into the system this is not the leakage current in the main uh, uh, dc db system so now in the receiver just refresh and check whether it is faulty or not so it has already started sending the signal saying that there is already a ground in the system if there is no ground you will be having a straight line if there is a ground then you will get a square waveform so now let's see which is grounded whether it is negative or positive so now let's connect to the positive feeder and then refresh you can see that the positive feeder is grounded we can see from the transmitter as well it shows positive bus bar ground so it's very clear let's go to the negative connect to the negative then refresh you can see that there is no fault in the negative which means that there is no form there is no waveform so now let's start with the feeders let's connect the feeders one by one and see which feeder is faulty so we are going with the feeder one always refresh when you connect to a different feeder so the fault is in feeder one this this is a loop connection so we have created a fault at plus four so the signal should show in the until the feeder number four sorry until this loop one two three four so if i create a fault here only in one so the fault should be only in one it should not be in others so it is like a loop connection you go panel to panel and then you go until the fault point so this will help you to identify the feeder and also take you to the exact fault point so you can increase the signal strength here to see whether it is faulty or not then let's go to the next feeder refresh you can still see that there is a fault continuation happening okay so the fault is still fourth so next we go to the next feeder and then we refresh there's no signal so which means the fault is still this point the fault is not going to the other point so you are exactly knowing that where the fault ends at so this is how you can do let's go to the negative feeders and check since there is no negative fault there should be no signal in the negative so just a straight line so there is no fault in the negative so this is system is very accurate and helps you to exactly pinpoint which feeder is faulty and it will trace you till the fault point so let's see how our big sensor can help you you have seen the sensor here 
so always clamp and refresh so that you can see the signal and then you press this center button once you find out the fault once you pinpoint the fault then this this injection will stop so it's always check that this transmitter is injecting if the transmitter is injecting not injecting then you cannot find uh, the trace of the faulty feeder so i'll stop the signal now let's move with the bigger clamp let's connect the bigger clamp there is a point here which helps you to exactly connect this sensor just press and then this sensor you just need to touch the cables so that you can see the healthiness of the feeders now let's go with the ground let's start injecting the signal this is the button please wait signal started let's connect to the ground here and refresh So there is the ground is saying that there's a ground fault. Let's see whether it is positive or negative. Let's keep only on the positive. The signal strength is very high. Let's make his little dog. Then again, refresh. So you can see that it is showing fault on the positive since it's a positive ground. Then uh, let's keep it on the negative. Okay, and then refresh. There's no fault, no signal. Again, refresh. No fault, no signal. So this clearly states that how these sensors works in different conditions, a faulty condition and healthy conditions. This is how this equipment uh, helps you to exactly pinpoint the fault and trace the faulty feeder and uh, without interrupting the DC system, you can uh, make the system stable. If you need any information, please contact us. Thank you so much. And uh, one last mo one more thing we need to say that whenever you switch off the system, uh, we need to make sure that there is no signal injection in the tr uh, transmitter. Okay, and then switch off. Always remove the connections first without removing ground and always try to touch this to the ground so that there is no uh, induction in the equipment thank you